No one gives a fuck about your brand. And like your brand is not trackable. If I change the colors of Lionstone, I can't track if that specific thing results in more dollars on the, the bottom line. If your brand is just to consistently put out stuff, but you're not getting any traction. If you're like one of those people like, oh yeah, consistency, consistency, post four times a week, but you're getting four views are fucking real. Something's wrong. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of shit come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do just to feed me And what was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me Take into your hands a plan Your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility Hold on everyone, welcome back to the podcast From Lambs to Lions, we're here um, It's been a while since it's just been a, a me and Patrick episode Patrick's forgotten how to do it, I, uh, I think. Um, but welcome. Firstly, uh, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone that's been showing support. Um, YouTube's been fucking popping off and it's been real cool to see. Um, so if you haven't, go subscribe on YouTube. Um, like, comment, subscribe. I don't actually know what it does, but <laughs> apparently it helps the algorithm. Um, and what, Spotify? Yeah, Spotify. Spotify, five-star rating. You can do it in the app while you're listening. Apple Podcasts. I think we said last episode it was Apple Podcasts, Apple Music, whatever one it's on. Um, and that's all the platforms. And YouTube, like, subscribe, turn the notifications on. That's all of them. You really want to make sure you do that um, because I've been putting a bit of time into actually creating some resources for you guys to actually get some benefit from. So there's going to be um, not only case studies, uh, I've been putting through, putting together the, the 10 most useful strategies I've found within business that actually create profit. Um, and then also um, any of the, the, I guess, resources that we mentioned when it comes to the business talks that we talk, we go through, um, if there's any sort of uh, template, <clears throat> any sort of template or anything like that, that I can create for you guys, I'll, um, I'll put them into some place that you guys can go download. But you only know that if you put all the fucking notifications and shit on so do that please anyway <laughs> welcome <laughs> that was a bit of a rant at the beginning yes you stole my intro part too i'm supposed to do all the welcome share and yeah. like and stuff like that but i think today's topic we spoke about it earlier in our team meeting mm. last week whenever it was but we spoke specifically about customer journey and trying to improve Linestone's customer journey, yeah. which is something we've put a bit of effort into over the last however many months but we actually sat down and mapped out a plan with different steps on how to hit every touch point of that customer journey. So mm -hmm. I thought it would be beneficial for others to kind of learn your thoughts on customer journey and how we can get from, I don't know, someone that's never heard of the company before to a paying customer. You're only asking this because you don't get it, do you? Not at all. No, <laughs> it's not, but it's also not my job to understand yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So um, there's six, point of, six points of customer journey generally. Um, do you want to go through each of them? Like as in, do you want me to go through them, each of them and, and break Let's, them down? Or? We'll, go, we'll start with the first one and okay. then we'll, we'll break them down into probably short, sweet bits so that okay, people cool. can understand. Sweet. So like initially- Get your notepads to, out. Get your notepads out. Yeah, cool. Um, initially, when it comes to any sort of business, and this could be service product um, or tech, uh, you're going to have to have an awareness phase. Okay, mm -hmm. so there is a portion of time where people only become aware of you. They don't know what you do, how you do it, but they're just aware that you're a thing. Um, and most people don't actually capture any sort of uh, or govern any sort of ownership over this awareness phase. Um, and it's something that it's probably where you have the most amount of power uh, within actual business, but it's the least trackable unless you actually give it KPIs to track against. Mm -hmm. So awareness, uh, essentially to give it a really simple description is when they first... Uh, if we use the world of social media, when they first become aware of what you do, they come to your page. Perhaps they're not a follower yet, but they've heard of you. They've had um, seen things maybe in their discovery page. Uh, and now they've come to your page and they're like, okay, cool. Now this is a brand. This is the thing that I recognize. Um, and in that phase, we have, we, have to, we have to look at three things. Like realistically in every, every phase, there's three portions of, uh, I guess, framework that we need to look at. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And, that is, and that's really simple. It's going to be what is their goal in that phase? Um, what is the customer's goal in that phase? Uh, what are their actions in that phase? And then how do you determine if those actions are some, somewhat successful for your business? Mm -hmm. um, and that's the portion that most people leave out. Mm -hmm. Although, to be fair, they're not, most people aren't even really aware of what their customers are doing at any given point in their journey. They've, they think the customer journey starts when they get on a call with them or when they send an inquiry. And it's like, no, the fucking journey starts well before that. Mm. Um, 
and we need to we need to adjust to that and we're in a world that you know realistically websites are becoming somewhat obsolete people find you through their social media platforms yeah um and we need to look at that as like your awareness that's your attention governing factor mm. and attention is currency in business like the more attention you can fucking get mm. the more dollars you will see eventually yeah, yeah um and that's positive or negative attention like there's so many people in every industry that have like a cult following but then other people that fucking hate them but they push their message just as hard. Mm. The tension is going to be the thing that actually ends up being currency. Yeah, I, I, we, I think um, we did an episode with, it's not out yet, Dan Brophy, but he yeah. said something similar to like the social media is like the new storefront. Yeah. Is where you want to make your social yeah, media. Yeah, I totally agree. So this is probably a warm up to what, like this portion of this this customer journey mm. is a warm up to everything that Dan went through. So big shout out to Dan, absolute legend. Um, You guys are going to love that episode. I think it might be next week. It's next one. Yeah, after yeah, this. Yeah, cool. So this will be a good little, um, I guess, segue into that. But the portion where people don't see it is like, fuck, if if they if you think your journey starts all the way when they first actually interact with you, like mm. you're missing the biggest part of the picture. Um, and <laughs> you have no power of where to actually take them, what to do, or whether you're doing the right thing. I feel like the, the biggest thing that I hear when it comes to any of the businesses that I work with, the, the thing they say that's fucking common is like, I feel like I'm just throwing like shit at a wall when it comes to my content, right? And they're just chucking shit out there because that's them paying attention to when their customer buys, like what kind of customer interacts with them. Mm. What do they say? What do they, what do they do? It's like, okay, well, if you're only writing content and creating content for the people there, what about the people that aren't ready to do that yet? How do you nurture them and build them into, and how do you get them from step one, two, three, all the way to step six, which is an advocate or step to jump to the end, right? Someone that's already purchased and now can tell and become your salesman. It's a brand ambassador. Yeah, a brand ambassador. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. So how do we actually get them from one to the other? And you have to understand their goals, their actions, mm. and then if it's success. Yep. So to, to give you an example, right? Like if we look at that awareness phase, we need to be looking at this and go, okay, cool, fuck. Now I'm aware of this person. What if we, if we map this out in like real time, think about what you do when you first become aware of a new product or brand. Mm-hmm. Do you sit there and scroll through all of their stuff? Do you sit there and look at their first three things? Do you only look visual? Like, what are you doing? What are you looking for? And if it's a if it's a product or if it's a service that's going to be different, mm. but this is for, for everyone at home, you just need to put yourself into the, um, the boots of a new customer, right? Someone that's never heard of you. What are the actions you're going to take? Now, if we use our industry as an example, like the goal of someone that stumbles across our page is because they've probably, the algorithm has probably noticed that they look at a lot of things to do with like um, physical health, mm-hmm. physical fitness, uh, improvement, um, nutrition or training, yep. right? They've, they've sent us, sent this person in our direction or someone, one of their friends has posted about us like, oh, they've got curious, what is that? Mm. So the first point of goal, their first goal is they're curious. They're they like, want to understand. What, what's, what is this thing, mm. right? Then they're probably going to have a goal if they want to make some change, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then perhaps they might have a goal of um, creating some independence around their training and nutrition. Mm-hmm. Cool. There's my content plan. Like that's fucking simple. It makes it easy for you. Right. All you, all you now need to do with your content in like at some point in your week, you, your, some of your content needs to create some sort of curiosity. It needs to confirm that you can actually help create independence. Like this is using our brand as an example. And then there also needs to be something um, that, that they're going to get what they came for, right? That they're going to get the change. So there needs to be some results, et cetera, et cetera right? What are their actions then, right? So again, put yourself in their shoes. What do you do when you come across a new product or service, right? You might click into a few of their posts, Mm -hmm. right? So this is where I would look at maybe the top three of your posts need to be essentially a virtual business card, Mm. right? Can you then track the interactions, the reach as a a moving and growing target weekly? Like look at that as a KPI. Does this post grow? Does its views grow every week, right? If you make your top three posts pinned as reels, you can now track views. Yeah. Is my awareness actually getting better? Mm-hmm. Is my, the three things, and you can rotate. If you just see that these things are fucking stale, they're not moving, you can start to rotate. This is a fucking big one, a little bit of a rant. But the biggest thing, and I think there's two things when it comes to like scaling a business, understanding business, is like just knowing strategy, right? But then also knowing um, when the strategy is not, it's not just not working, but it's just the wrong strategy. Right. What do you mean? So KPIs, right? If we look at, I don't know, we'll pick a random thing. If I just started measuring the amount of times you wore a hat, right, <laughs> to, to gauge how many steps mm. you did. It's pointless. The, yeah, the yeah. KPI is broken. It doesn't, mm. the, the outcome doesn't actually tell me anything, right? The KPI is the problem, right? It's not that you're, you're, the tracking of the steps is the problem. Right. You're just tracking the wrong fucking metric. Yeah. Right. So this is where we look at business metrics, like because they're subjective, especially earlier in this customer journey, you have to be the one to pick what you're tracking, mm-hmm. right? 
we don't know if what you're tracking is correct. Is there a way that they can determine what well, the best thing to track yeah, is? So if, if those things that you're tracking are stale and non-movable, so let's say maybe it's not those reels, maybe it's uh, link clicks, maybe it's shares, maybe it's DMs, mm-hmm. right? If you're tracking that and it just stays the same no matter what you do, you're probably tracking the wrong fucking thing, yep. right? Because if it's not moving, coming up or down, you can't really sit there and go, well, what can I improve upon? Mm-hmm. Because nothing's influencing it. <clears throat> None of the sense. auxiliary inputs are actually changing it. Mm. Whereas if like it's moving up and down consistently, you go, okay, well, what did I do that day that made it move up? What did I move, do that day that made it move down? Well, I think so even, do that even going backwards, having things go down is a good indicator of like, okay, maybe I shouldn't do this from now on. That's my point. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so like movable data gives you direction. You're allowed to actually go, okay, fuck. Um, I said it to one of my, my clients this morning when, when we were looking over a business, like when we talk system, system's the ultimate for business for you to grow and scale, right? But you first need process, mm-hmm. process, action, equal systems. Mm-hmm. I repeat a process plus actions equal systems. So you first need to fucking find the process, right? To then build a system upon it. Mm-hmm. And KPI tracking is systems. Okay. So when we look at this and go, okay, fuck, if you're tracking the same, these data and nothing's really changing, and but or it's changing marginally based on you're making three or four changes a week based on how you put content out, you just need to think about a new success rate. What's the new KPI? Find a KPI that actually creates movement mm-hmm. and then try and get predictable movement out of that KPI. Right. right? If okay. you post more, does it get more traction? If you um, DM more people, if you do cold outreach, if you do... Uh, more podcast tips, more content creation, more et cetera, yep. email marketing, what actually changes it and influences it to shift up. Okay. Okay. And then, so that, that those are the three things that we need to look at in any of these phases. Like what are their goals? What are their actions? And then what actions are we then going to track so mm-hmm. we can de- determine whether it's a success? Okay. Okay. So that's awareness. Awareness is one of the parts that people just throw shit at walls and think that like, fuck, oh, we'll just hope for the best. Mm-hmm. We never actually track if it, the only thing we track is inquiries. The only thing mm. we track is dollars on, on paper, right? But that's the end of the line. You're yeah, missing you, the whole bit You're in the missing middle. so much, man. Mm. Like if you're not able to actually sit here and go, okay, where am I, like, where am I, where's my traction? Where's my attention coming from? How do I govern more of that fucking thing? Mm. Like you're just literally going to continue to throw shit at a wall. And I see it all the time in the mentoring space. It's like, oh, social media, you have to be on your content. You have to be consistent. And I can quote, man, I've seen people say, just like, just post four times a week. Doesn't matter, matter what you post. It fucking does. I, I would 100% back that. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, just posting doesn't do anything, mm. right? Like, especially if you're not tracking goal, action, and outcome. Yeah. Like yeah. You, you, you're just wasting your time and people fucking don't give a shit. No, they're not even going to read the post or look at the video. Uh, and I, gonna... s- I don't know if I've said this. I think I might've said it in a future episode, but I don't know. We're fucking all <laughs> over the shop, but no one gives a fuck about your brand and like your brand is not trackable. If I change the colors of Lionstone, I can't track if that, inc- that specific thing inc- re- results in more dollars on the, f- on the, the bottom line. Yeah. So you're like, all right, fuck. If your brand is just to consistently put out stuff, but you're not getting any traction. If you're like one of those people like, oh yeah, consistency, consistency, post four times a week, but you're getting four views are fucking real. Something's wrong. Yeah. Right. And it's not the fact that no one's inquiring. It's not the fact that like, oh, the algorithm's broke. Like mm. broke. No. <laughs> like, people will find it regardless of where the algorithm is. Your fault. If you have more than four followers, you should be getting more than four views. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, and that's the thing. If, and you, the, the, the simple thing here is you're just not, a, you're not listening to what your customers need. Not, not listening. You're not, learning what your customers mm. actually come to you for mm. or projected customers, potential customers. You just don't understand their journey. And this is where understanding not only your product, but like what makes your product mm-hmm. actually run mm-hmm. or even better way to put it, what makes your, your, your competition's product actually run better than yours? Cause if they're making more money, it's better. Yeah. Right? Hands down. They're, they're mm. somewhere in this line. They're doing something better. Yeah. Right. And that's not fucking any dig. It's just, it's fact. Something in this line, they're either governing more attention or they're able then to shift them into any of these other five pillars easier than you are. Would you then, if you saw a competition was doing something better, would you go to their socials and be like, cool, I'm going to copy this, this, and this? Because there's nothing original anymore. No. Yes and no, right? So I agree. There's nothing original anymore. However, it depends if you're, uh, do you mean competition as in direct competition, same market, same, yeah. et cetera? Yeah, yeah then sure, I would, it was success leaves clues, mm. but there comes a point. So yes, success leaves clues and you can copy to a point, but at the end of the day, because nothing is new, nothing is original, you need to fucking innovate mm-hmm. because, and you need to find points of difference because if all you do is the same thing, then you, you're never going to stand out regardless, right? Again, attention is currency and there's only so much attention that people can go through. Yep. So 
yes and no, copy to a point, but then you have to go. If you're always copying, you're always behind. That's is true. the short part of that. Short, so yeah, like, short, yeah, yeah. Sort of short side of that. Like if you're always copying, someone is always ahead. Mm -hmm. So you have to innovate at some point, but like <clears throat> to get some traction, to get some data, to get some success points. Mm -hmm. Sure, copy it. See if it works for your brand and your, and there's look. This is probably a little bit of a different topic, but the someone could be your direct competition. They could share the same client, right? But their brand, mission, vision, and ex and and what they stand for could be very different. Right. They uh, acquire yeah. the same client, but through a different uh, through a different means. Yeah, yeah. Which means if you copy them, it's, it's going to be work. off brand and it's not going to relate to what you do. Mm. But I think you should know your product well enough to like the people come to you for your product. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should have to niche. I think your product niches you in general, mm -hmm. but that, that man, the whole niching conversation. Whole That's a whole other whole, episode. Whole thing. We'll write but, that one down. Yeah, definitely. It was an interesting conversation in short. Don't fucking bother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain that at a later date. Um, but to, to go from awareness, we then want to go to consideration. That's phase two. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the part where people confuse a lot. Like they, they just bulk all of the shit that happens before actual inquiry is like, ah, that's all one, it's all thing. one big thing. It's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Cause when you become aware, there's a big difference between you're just, you know, someone or when you like actually start to pay attention, mm -hmm. you think back to look at, you look at any like product or service you've ever come across. You first see it like, oh, that's cool. And then you're like, maybe they've hit you with some paid ads. Maybe they've um, retargeted you a little bit. And now you start to become a bit more conscious of them mm. and you consider them, you, you consider whether you want to spend money with them. Okay. Right. So consideration is the customer considering spending money. Customer considering or, money or considering if you can help um, yeah. solve their problem. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you fit their values, um, et cetera. Right. And in that consideration phase, they're realistically going to do two things. Mm -hmm. They're going to compare the fuck out of you to you and who they see to be your competition. And that's either going to be on service or price yep. um, or both. <coughs> um, if they do that, that's where they're, you know, you might hear of like, I'm just getting some information. I'm just in, I'm just trying to see, just, they're just trying to put the feelers out, right? Mm -hmm. Just trying to like stir the pot a bit and just see what, see what kind of comes up. Yep. Right. In that time, that's where they might also start engaging with your stuff, right? So you might see some more likes come through. You might see if you're tracking the correct stuff, you might start to see uh, potential link clicks, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe not inquiry link clicks, but like, uh, engagement to website, uh, homepage visits, um, free resource visits, etc. Again, we need to look at the goal of consideration. It's to confirm if you can help mm -hmm. or if there's a better option. That's really what the go their goal in considering your service or product yep. is. Can you help, or is there someone that can do it better for cheaper? Right. And in that consideration phase, how do you? Is there a, is there a formula that you can make yourself come out on top of that consideration? It, so yeah, there definitely there is. So not so much a formula, but if you're tracking multiple data points in awareness, mm -hmm. you can then see where <coughs> when most people are getting more aware of you mm -hmm. and starting to understand your brand messaging. And I would double down in those areas. If you start to see those areas start to tilt up a little bit, double down, triple, if not quadruple your efforts in those specific areas, mm -hmm. you then can overwhelm the market when it comes to actually being considered as the the best. Like you've got, you've got really two things to compete on. You've got um, service as far as like quality of service and value, yep. or you've got price, okay. right? And if you're, if you ever find yourself in a price war where like you feel like you have to make things cheaper, cheaper just to compete, the only way to win is fucking triple your price. Mm -hmm. You stand out above the crowd, people will start to actually go, oh, well, why? And then they'll start to look into you. But like to, to formulate a, a process of more consideration is to overwhelm the market, to give them no other choice, okay. to make sure that you're logical. Because people are going to purchase, when it gets to the purchase portion, they're going to purchase on emotion, mm -hmm. confirm with logic. Cool. Okay, so we want to start to build the logic now mm -hmm. as well as emotion. Okay. okay, emotion comes in the next phase, which is research. Right. Yep. I'll come to that in a second, but each phase, I just want to reiterate, right? What's the goal of consideration? We want to see if someone can do it better, faster or cheaper. And if you align with their values, mm -hmm. right? We then, that's probably the goal of everyone in consideration. Yep. Right. What are their actions? So they're either going to then start to interact with your stuff a bit more, maybe download some free resources, maybe uh, just look around, mm -hmm. right? And see what else is available <clears throat> that's similar. Yep. Okay. How do you track if that's working? Downloads on your free shit link clicks to whatever you're trying to push them to, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? Research is where we start. To, that's, so that's building logic. Cool. So, so far we've got awareness, which is um, the tracking KPIs in order to see growth in certain areas. Awareness is like when they first come to you. Yep. And then you need to see like, well, how can I create more awareness, more attention? How do I get more of that? Yeah. Yeah. 
So you, then, you, that's, but like the, the metric for that is tracking certain KPIs to make sure things are yeah, going in the right direction. To, and you have to essentially keep uh, rinsing and repeating the KPIs mm-hmm. until you can find something that's workable. Cool. And then consideration is when you've found that area, mm-hmm. you double down on it. Yep, double down on mm-hmm. it. And then you make yourself stand out from the competition. Mm-hmm. That when they do compare you, that everything that they compare on, there's more for you to offer. Yep. Okay. Right. Because, and that's where it's a logic game, mm-hmm. right? It's just like, well, oh, if all things were equal, both charge the same. And I go to this other person's page and there's more information, more, like, there just has to be more. Value. You have to, you have to over, yeah, value is the word. You have to fucking overdo on the value and perceived value specifically. It doesn't need to be like you, you know, getting on free calls with people and mm. whatnot. Like, you can leverage value in a bunch of different ways. I think we've covered the main ways before. Maybe not. That's a whole other episode as well. No, this I don't is think a whole bran- This is a fucking branch <laughs> episode. So, <laughs> values, we'll go into another way. Perceived value, you can either go head, heart, uh, gut, so oh. head, heart, gut, or genitals, four ways. We mm. did. We went through this with Michael Bronfman. Yeah, we um, did. Go back to that app. It's, it's real cool. But we can do perceived value in that way, mm-hmm. right? And we want to double down on that perceived value so mm-hmm. that when we're starting to build logic, yep. we're just like, oh, these guys are a logical choice, right? And we haven't even really hit emotion, right? If they've gone through your social media platform and you've done content well, there should be emotion there. But let's say when they've gone to this portion of consideration, they're checking other people's shit, they're going to be using logic. Mm-hmm. They're putting you through their logic filter. Like, does this make sense? Yep. Right. Do they have bad reviews or do they, do have they have good, good reviews, all that kind of stuff. Then we go into research. Research is emotion, Mm -hmm. right? Research is, are they looking at your, like again, in our industry is results, Mm -hmm. right? Same in like any tech industry or marketing industry. It's like, they're going to look for testimonials. Yep. They're going to look for confirmation biases that you are now not just a logical choice, but you fucking make them feel good about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's all just going to come from just proof that you can do what you say you do, right? And that's, you know, that's broad. So whether it be service, product, tech, et cetera, you need proof. And when they research you and find out more about you, they can't just do a Google search and then go, oh, fuck, two-star reviews, mm. right? If that's the case, like I, I don't know any businesses that, that are, like I'm not in any circles that have people, uh, you know, businesses are fucking failing and shit. Mm. But <clears throat> if that is the case, you need to do some PR, and some fucking big PR to try and get that shifted up. Yep. Right. Because if they're if they're if your searchability comes back negative, you uphill battle. Definitely. Big big uphill battle. You, you'll just never win. <clears throat> yeah. So, in that research phase, they need to confirm what they already feel is logic, mm-hmm. and that's when the emotion starts to build. Okay. And it's just like capitalize the shit out of that, and you, you should be able to transition them into the next phase, which is hope. Mm-hmm. Pretty damn easy, right? So hope is like. What's going on, everyone? Hope you're well. I won't keep you too long. I know you're hopefully enjoying the podcast. And if you are, let us know. It would be really greatly appreciated if you can jump on, give us a quick five-star review. You don't even need to stop listening to the show. Uh, if you're on Spotify, you can do it in less than 10 seconds. And um, it does help the show grow a lot. It helps us you know, get a bit of confirmation bias that we're doing the right thing. And just to say thank you, if you guys do do that, uh, we're going to be picking one person every month to guest spot on the podcast that has shared, liked, comment, subscribed, and, and interacted with what we do. Big thank you. Let's get back to it. Let's just, sorry, let's just circle back to emotion there. Yep. Um, is that built, that's built purely through content? Uh, Are there any other ways that you can think of someone can build, get emotion out of a client or a uh, potential customer? Dude, 100%. So like, not only is it content, it's, I guess it all comes back to content. Like mm-hmm. Content's a big word. Yeah. Right. So like, if they've downloaded any of your resources, if they've done any research on you, like let's, let's just go hypothetical paid. You've got paid media going, Mm -hmm. right? All the retargeting of anyone that's like gone to your results page is now about not results, but how all of the uh, customers and clients of your business felt and how much time it saved them, what problems it solved, all that kind of stuff. That's like drive re re driving emotion. So it might be through paid media. It could be through owned media where you're doing like an email campaign where they just get hit with stories and or, or maybe they're starting to buy into you as a person, mm-hmm. right? Where they could, I don't know, you get access to like a, um, a community discord, right? Where it's just stuff about you, your day. If you're selling like your product is yourself, right? Yep. As far yeah, as your yep. brand, personal brand. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's just going to confirm emotion. Okay. Heaps of ways to do it, but it all does come under content. Yeah, it's just a big umbrella term. Yeah, cool. 100%. And then, yeah, so transitioning into hope. When, they, when someone's emotional, man, like <coughs> leveraging hope out of them is very fucking easy. Mm-hmm. Um. And hope is one of these things where it's going to be time dependent, right? So you can what only, do you mean? well, you can only stay hopeful for so long. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you go through this process where like, cool, you've come aware of them, you've considered, you've done your research, like, oh fuck, these guys are the people I want to work with. And you've sent through an inquiry, you've emailed them, you've called them. Um, maybe your business is like 
a product, right? Where now you, you sell a physical product, right? Mm. They're actually dipping their toes in. They're like, okay, oh, cool. I'm going to buy the thing, mm. right? Now we have to wait for shipping. Yeah, right. right. So they're hopeful. Like, fuck, I'm hoping this is a product. Hopefully it's good. But if your shipping doesn't, if, the, if it takes six weeks, mm. that hope's gone real, real quick. And there's yeah. resentment. It's like, fuck, I spent money. I still don't have the thing, mm. right? Because we thought we look in, we work in extremes as human, right? Whenever we experience one emotion, we're bound to experience the other. It's very hard to just neutralize, mm-hmm. right? As just like, especially when we're emotional. Yeah. Right? Emotions don't really work in minors. No. They, they swing. One side to another. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we've got someone really hopeful, we've got them emotional, we need to capitalize on that really fucking quick. And there's ways that like, yes, for example, like product market, product, product market businesses, you can't help shipping time. Mm. But what you can do is reduce buyer's remorse from day one. Mm-hmm. So like they get a tracking number, they see where their order is. That's buyer, that's reducing buyer's remorse. It's increasing hope because like, oh, it's still on the way. Yeah, yeah. They can see the countdown to when they're going to get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And then there could be like four days after they've purchased, there could be like a, here's a discount code for your next one. Right. It's just mm. re-sparking that flame of hope. Yeah. Right. Same goes if we go digital service. If someone signed up to your program, your product or service online, right? They've paid their money. There should be the smallest amount of time delay before they get a win is going to be fucking crucial. Yep. Right? We need to keep them in that hope, that hope phase, right? And I've kind of jumped the gun a little bit here. Purchase, especially for product, is a little bit different, mm-hmm. right? Hope and, and purchase are probably flipped. Yep. They purchase before they hope, okay. right? But in service delivery, they might put an inquiry through. Mm. right and they might or they might um even tech right like a, a software company like oh, i want to use this software they might put it in like okay now i've got to wait for a response yeah right the shortest period of time that they can wait for a response or even if it's just an automated reply saying like what to expect manage your expectations like we've received your um your inquiry mm. uh one of our staff will be in contact within 12 hours blah blah blah. so it gives them a time period of like cool i'm i'm gonna expect this then Yep. Yeah. You manage cool. expectations as fast as possible. Mm. If you can incorporate a win in there, like a, a massive win for us, what we do is like I call them, like as a CEO of our company, man, mm-hmm. like someone inquires, they get a call within two minutes, average within two minutes, if, as long as mm. they're not inquiring at a dumb time. Yep. Like they'll get a call from me and the first thing I say, it's like Reece, CEO from Linestone, how are you? And they're like, Fuck, I just I just did this. I'm like, mm. yeah, no, like we do things fast. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, one I noticed recently was – um you you asked me to make a booking with a company mm. and I made that booking and within 12 hours I had an invite to a Facebook group, mm-hmm. which I clicked. And then within, I think, 15 minutes of me being in that Facebook group, everyone that had been added to that Facebook group got tagged in the welcome post with a video from the CEO saying, thank you. That's mad, mm. right? So straight away, you haven't even spent money. No. But you now feel like that everything you did your research on, again, mm. it's logic confirmation. Mm. Yeah, they're like, oh, it's a professional, it's a professional experience. Oh, mm. I'm going to get what I want. Right, they can help because it's like seamless. Yep. Right. So we want to capitalize on that hope and give them as many wins as possible. If we're looking at service delivery, as many wins as possible before they have to pay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Because that's just going to create more logic and reinforce all the emotion that they've got. Yeah. Right. If you do it really well, you can reinforce emotion over that time too. So they've booked, they've sent an inquiry, and then the next four days, right? You make it like let's say if it's a calendar booking, mm-hmm. you make that someone can't book for forty eight hours. Let's just say like it blocks out 48 hours from when they first inquire, mm-hmm. right? You do it really well. The next 48 hours, like they're getting hit with like a couple texts, a couple emails about like, oh, you know when you feel like this, mm-hmm. right? And you feel like you, you get stuck and you don't have any time, we're going to be able to help that. Or this is how we helped so-and-so solve that problem, right? Yeah, right. And you tell them some stories, right? And remember, facts tell, stories sell. Yeah, I say it all the fucking time, Right telling some stories in the lead up to when they come in and purchase like they're in green brain right red brain green brain red brain red brain is where you stop like what do you do at a stop sign you fucking stop Mm -hmm. you think you get bored you get logical yeah you're like fuck why am i sitting at this traffic light this is stupid Mm -hmm. right green brain you're like fuck yeah let's go (laughs) yeah like you're just going yeah yeah yeah. right so like it's that's what we want to try and encourage all the way into a sales process Mm. But the only way to get it's it's so fucking ironic. People just like they look at their sales conversion. Oh, I'm at like fucking below fifty percent, right? And by my standard, anything below sixty percent, like work on your sales. Mm. Um, but fuck, I'm below there. They're like, oh, something's wrong with my sales. Fix the sales. Fix the sales. It's like, yeah, okay, that'll help. But how about what if you did pre-purchase nurturing and focused on their awareness and built their emotional status and built their mm. logic from day one? Yeah, that makes sense. So like the hope phase two, would that have to do with? 
Um, let's say it's a physical product and it's got six weeks to ship. Yep. Are those those pre-nurturing emails keeping brand fresh or company, your business fresh in mind the entire yeah. time? Yeah, mm-hmm. well, not only that, but it's reinforcing that um, we know this. Like, for example, like I've done product as well, bro. Like we had experience. Oh, I'll share a big fucking, a big, big loss that we had, right, mm-hmm. in our product business. Last, last year, Black Friday. Mm-hmm. Fuck, man. Like we had ordered all this stuff, um, new stock, really went all in on it. But then COVID. Yep. Right. That shot sh- um, freight pricing through the roof mm-hmm. and then it shot time delay through the roof as well. Mm-hmm. Right. And we had just launched and we'd done a pre-sale right. of stuff that we didn't have. Uh, so we had to wait, <coughs> I think it was close to 12 weeks mm. to, to give these people a new product that they paid for three months prior. Mm. Um, and we fucked it. Mm-hmm. Right. We didn't have anything on the back end to actually nurture them to, you know, be excited to get that product in three months. Right. right. So going back, you would have a, like a nurturing system to. Yeah. Well, we had a, we had a 20% refund pro- like uh, percentage. Right. Right. So 20% of the people that purchased mm. uh, wanted a refund because we just, the large amount of them were buying them for Christmas presents. We're going to be there before Christmas. Mm. We fucked up. Yeah. Right. Now, one of my mentoring clients now that has a product business, cool. I've gone through that shit. Don't do that. Mm. Right. They're preparing now. They've, they've done a pre-sale of product right? And a large, large volume of pre-sale, mm. right? Right. Now we need to make sure that they feel fulfilled. Guess yep. what? There was delays, right? Mm. And to give you some volume capacity here, there's like, this is $40,000 worth of sales, mm-hmm. right? So there are a, a lot of people expecting this product to come. Mm. So how do we make sure that we reduce buyer's remorse? We make sure that in the time that it's taking to produce this product because it got delayed, they're now being made aware, hey, there's a delay, but guess what? You're now going to get this as well. Guess what? You're now going to get this as well as a bonus. Right. right? You're going to get a discount on your next product. And then also just like behind the scenes, like um, content mm. that's dripped out to the people that only purchased, like showing them the struggle, showing them the talking to the supplier, showing them that you're not just fucking taking their money. Yeah. So right? there's like an emotional connection between them and the brand. Yeah. And they feel like excited, like fuck another mm. delay. And they, they get annoyed, not that they're not going to get their product, but like, oh, that you, the business owner has to deal with that. Uh, so they, they feel like they're part of the company now. Feel a part of the process. Mm. Yeah. They, we're just like everything here in hope is just reduce buyer's remorse as yep. much as possible. Yeah. Or if it's not buyer's remorse, if we're looking, if it's, they've just sent through an inquiry, reduce, um, we'll call it decision fatigue. Mm -hmm. where they've made that decision like, oh, should I, should I not? And this is where if you guys, if you guys are in a a service-based business where you're building um, like a booking system where people book, if you find that people are are doing Mm no-shows and this happens all the time off paid media, right? If you're running paid ads and running heaps of paid ads and just trying to get them to book, right? You haven't done an adequate nurturing process to get them to, to want to show up, right? Okay. Uh, And the most traditional ones, man, like where you look at like the, the marketing mentors, right? Where they're like, mm. oh, join my fucking program and you'll sell a million dollars and blah, blah, blah. Mm. They'll essentially plug you into their system where they say, okay, cool. You're going to sign up all these high ticket clients. They say you're going to be able to get all these conversions. You're going to have all these bookings, right? But the funnel, right? The, the so, to speak, so to speak funnel is like one ad call to action book. And then there's like, oh, there's some pre-call homework where they get told, don't fucking no show me. Like there's no enough, there's not enough fucking emotional buy-in yeah. and if, in paid media, if you guys are running it, like make sure that like I would first test to build an audience, mm-hmm. right? So they know you actually trust you start to build a little bit of all of this awareness consideration and do their research and all that shit, right? Yep. Play the longer game, right? And I would dare say for most, most small businesses, even if you are generating bulk leads organically, right? I would really encourage you to just like, even if it's 10 bucks a week, 20 bucks a week, just start throwing some into, into marketing and building an audience mm-hmm. that you can then retarget to when the time comes that you're going to actually try and acquire new customers that way. So the first step is not to just pump out a book in a call with me. Correct. Yeah, cool. Yeah. From my experience, mm-hmm. whenever I've worked with, with any of my um, the businesses that I work with, whenever we've done marketing, from my experience, it's like the only ones that really uh, pop off quick is obviously through TikTok. But yeah. TikTok is no call to action. It's just they like who you are and what you do and what you offer. Yeah. And then they just click through to the call to action, right? Mm. But traditional marketing, like the reason why, you, you, and a lot of people will relate to this, they run marketing and they get all these leads. And that's what most of the marketing companies will say. Like, oh, we'll get you leads. Like, yeah, okay, cool. How many show up? You What's your show rate? Leads, yeah. What's your show rate to calls? Um, and if it's really, really low, it's because you haven't leveraged hope largely. Mm-hmm. 
right? You haven't created enough emotion for them to be like, fuck, I actually need this call. Yeah. It's going to solve my problem. Mm. Right. So that's like a really big one. If you find that like, whether it be marketing or organic, you're getting a low show rate. It's because you're not leveraging enough emotion, creating enough hope within the customers that are coming to you. Yeah. It makes sense. And then, then I guess the, the, the very simple one, next phase is purchase. The goal of the purchase, right? The, like again, it's not going to sound like a broken record, but you need to know the goal of the action and the success, mm-hmm. right? So hope we'll, we'll, we'll go that the goal is to like, um, will they deliver on the product fast? If it's a product, will it be here? Will it be good? Will, um, <coughs> if they've already purchased, like this is like, if it's flipped, mm-hmm. will it be good? Will it not break, et cetera? Yep. Um, if they're like getting a call, if they've just like called and they're waiting for that call, it's like, okay, have they helped enough people like me? Um, do they, do they understand my problem? Do I feel heard? Do I feel like I'm not just a number? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're really big ones. Mm. Especially if you're in a service-based based industry, one of the biggest feedbacks I've seen come through all the service-based businesses that I work with is like when we do like a, we try and get an NPS score, so a net promoter score, yep. um, and just get like feedback from all portions of their business. The the most common one is service, like people that have negative feedback. So they feel like they, they feel like a number. Mm-hmm. And if we can like curb that feeling early, yep. it'd be fucking way better. Yeah, definitely. Way, way, you can fix so much, right? Um, so yeah. Action, so goal, action, mm-hmm. right? And so what is their action? They wait, mm-hmm. right? Um, they might also, uh, what what do you do when you're waiting for like, say for example, you I've got you booked in, we could tell everyone, we're, we're booked into a essentially a podcast production company. That was the company I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's earlier. what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. So now that you're waiting, right, what are your actions? Uh, so far, actually, this is, I don't know, I don't know if I should give feedback, but so far I they're a Canadian-based company and I, I emailed the guy I've got a call with. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard anything. Okay, cool. So what does that make you think? Well, I, I'm just going to have to rock up to a phone call and not get any communication beforehand to ask mm-hmm. to switch it to a different time or a, a different platform. Mm-hmm. But I would expect I would expect that, that the one thing they did really, really well was they would, I think it was the day after, so it would have been yesterday. Mm-hmm. Their time, I got an email at an appropriate hour saying, here's a link to the Facebook group. Mm-hmm. We appreciate the call. We appreciate you booking the call. Yep. Make sure you join the group. Got tagged in the welcome post. Watch the video, so on and so forth. But apart from that, so far, I've heard nothing else. But yeah, I would like to be a little bit more excited. Okay, so in that time of action, so like the, your goals are you want to feel excited, you want to feel like they can help, right? They're, they're goals, yeah. right? The actions though is like you emailed them for a confirmation, mm-hmm. right? So what else might, might someone do while they wait for a service, right? They might try and talk to old clients. Yeah. Right. So maybe here's here's a mm. fucking power play. After people book, right, with your service based industry, they get taken to a a contact page. Feel free to contact any of our old clients. That's a good idea. <laughs> fucking I we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that on the list. Yeah. But like obviously you'd have to ask permission from all the people within your business. Like, Hey, can, if we sign new people up, can we just give them your email where they can just reach out to you or they, your Instagram handle? Mm. Like we'll just put a list up, go talk to them. We're confident enough in our service that you'll fucking hear enough about what we do. That yeah. you, like this is going to be a no brainer for you. Yeah, definitely. Right. Like brainstorm out the possible actions that they take in that, in each phase. And again, I reiterate for every phase, you mm. need to know goal, you need to know action. So, cause if you know their actions, you know what your, response should be you know what you need to build in as i said before process action system Mm. yeah you need to know what the process is if you know their action you can then build a process off it and then that creates actions within your company yeah then you can systemize yeah it's true right so like success rate of hope is like is going to be show rate for calls it's Mm going to be um positive feedback if it's a product right um or interaction on your post, like they don't unfollow you after they fucking purchased your product and they're waiting, mm. right? Mm. I've done that before where yeah. I purchased something, like a physical product, physical product, heard no confirmation of like whether it got shipped, just had a bad customer experience. Like, unfollow the fuckers. Yeah, I'm not buying off of you again. Right? Mm. So if you start to see that kind of stuff shift, like that's really, really tangible things that you can start to track. Yep. Right. So then you like, again, you build your success rate. So then you can actually create process action and system in your business as well. Mm-hmm. And purchase, purchase is simple, right? They they buy their thing, right? Their goal is to get the fucking thing, right? They also want to make sure that they feel good about that. So again, they buy an emotion. So if we're going down the road of a call, they get emotional on the call, then confirm with logic. So the first hour after they spend the money needs to be the fucking best hour of their life. Yep. They don't need to have regret. 
So whatever you can do to build out um, buyer's remorse or reduce buyer's remorse. Um, so like it could be you know, a call from the CEO. It could be for, uh, an automation flow welcoming them, like just a general welcome pack. It could be, mm. fuck man, like so much they get a discount on your other products. They could get a free fucking a piece of apparel, like whatever it is, if we're talking service after they've bought your pro, like they've bought purchased your product, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, they need to get more perceived value. Yep. Fast. Yeah. Right? Time kills all fucking deals. I've said it all the time. Yeah. Buy remorse, reduce it fast. Okay. That's yeah. the goal. <clears throat> That's the action. Right. And then the success rate is essentially if they convert into the next portion, the next pillar, which is advocate. Brand ambassador, yeah. Brand ambassador, yep. Mm, right, okay. so if your success rate of your purchase is if they either re-sign, mm-hmm. right, and if like you've got a minimum term of service, they sign up again, yep. right, they refer people, mm-hmm. right, if they refer people, like your, your purchasing power is huge, mm. right, because not only, this is like something that gets like misunderstood a lot, like let's say you have a 12-week product or a 12-week service, minimum term, mm-hmm. and you charge five grand for it, right? And in that 12 weeks, we go, okay, cool. They refer generally, on average, everyone refers 1.8 people, mm-hmm. right? Or 1.5 people for math, yep. right? So we know that like that one person is not just worth the five grand, they're worth another five and a half grand as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because if you, if you have long-term data in your business that like if you get a good client and you do what you should and you service them properly, right? And they refer 2.2 people per month, Right, they're now fucking worth way more than their original investment. Yeah, yeah. And you want to do everything you can to keep that client, hundred mm-hmm. percent. And then you not only do you want to do everything you can to keep that client because like their LTV, the longer they stay, will extend lifetime mm-hmm. customer value. Right, will extend for the longer they're with you. Mm-hmm. Right, but then they also start to create like a it's a it's a compounding growth structure. Yeah, right. Right. It just like every person they refer is worth now this many people too. If you can create predictable business models like that, like fuck man, sky's the limit. Yeah. So that person will refer an average of 2.2 and they people refer an average of 1.5 and drips down. Yep. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it shouldn't drip down. If you do it properly, it should be like each customer Mm. refers an average of one point whatever people. Yeah, right. Throughout their minimum term of 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. And then they also stay for another 16 months based on because we're just fucking weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. That person isn't worth their initial five grand. Mm. They're worth what they're worth to you in that initial transaction, what they pay you over the totality of their lifetime in the business and what they bring into the business. Mm. One customer is no longer worth that $200 they pay you a week. Yeah. They're worth infinitely more. more. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so if you can track that, and this is like this whole conversation is just to say, track your fucking KPIs. Don't be a loser and say, oh, it's all good. Like it never is. Right, if you're just saying it's all good, it's not good. No. I promise. You're gonna just you're just being naive. Yeah. Right. And that's that's the customer journey. It's like if you can get them and understand how to what their goals are, what their actions are, you can then figure out what you need <coughs> what you need to do as a business. Mm. Right. If you understand goals, actions, you then know what you need to do as a business, what you need to systemize to get them from one section to the next and ultimately all the way to the fucking end where they become an advocate and brand ad, brand ambassador and grow your business for you. Mm. And that's the formula to build a business that operates without you. You made it sound so easy. Yeah. <laughs> we should make a worksheet for people to print that out. I can do that. There you go. Yeah. I'll give you guys, um, it'll be in the comments below. Download it in the description. They'll, we'll take you to a landing page. I'll build it before then. Um, and you guys can get a template on how to map all this shit out. Terrific. Cool. Thanks for, uh, that was a fucking long episode for a pretty, I think, simple pro- for simple topic. <laughs> but Hey, thanks for listening. <laughs> Pat's face then says that's not simple, but hopefully that um, makes a bit of sense to you guys. Um, I'll let Pat hit you with the stuff. Oh, I'm doing it. I forget. Oh. <laughs> um, make sure you rate us five stars on Spotify. I've been actually been tracking that. It's KPI. Yeah. Um, that's going up. Views, uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Oh, yeah, actually on that, mm. you motherfuckers. <laughs> just calling our audience motherfuckers. Yeah, that's right. Only 1% of you have subscribed on YouTube. Yeah, which I think there was one particular video where 99% of people weren't subscribed that watched the video. And it had like, it might have been the Nick episode, it had like two and a half thousand views. So, I'm looking at you. <laughs> hang on, in math, what is that? That's what, 200 and f- no, that's like 25 people. Dude, I do business, I don't do math. I'll do the math. That's like 25 people of that two and a half thousand that are subscribed. Yeah, so go subscribe. So there are 2,475 people that aren't subscribed. From that video. So please go do that. Okay, cool. There you go. Point is, not many of you are subscribed and we're trying to put 
We're trying to go give you good shit. So do that for you. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown.